Hey guys, welcome back to another great game of CDH. I know this is going to be another short one. I've been working really hard, especially with the holidays, to make something pretty cool. I spoiled it last week, but I've got some new merch. So if you're interested, check the links down below, as I think it's pretty sweet. Alright, block there, kill that, oh that is trample. Guess I'm just dead on board. First up is Hidden Planet X, piloting Tivit, seller of secrets. Next up is Fernando on Brago, King Eternal. In the third spot we have Rob playing Kenrith, the Return King. And bringing up the rear is Jordan, who brought Teferi, Temporal Archmage. But without further ado, let's get onto the gameplay. Hidden starts off with a Tundra into a Mox Diamond, discarding an Ottawaro, Tapping 2 for an Arcane Signet and a Jeweled Lotus. Also, we realized at this point Rob had a pregame action as he puts a Gemstone Caverns into play and exiles a Cyclonic Rift. Fernando has a Snow Covered Swamp and casts an Esper Sentinel. Rob plays a Command Tower and passes. Jordan plays an Island and casts a Graft Digger's Cage. He gives a card to Fernando. Hidden has an Underground Sea and decides for a little more setup as he casts a Dothy Voidwalker into a Grand Abolisher. Fernando plays a Tundra's Land for turn. Rob has an Exotic Orchard and pays 5 life into a Fire Covenant to wipe the board and gives a card to Fernando off the Esper Sentinel. Jordan has another Island and for 2 casts a Felwar Stone. Hidden plays an Ancient Tuma's Land and with the help of his Lotus casts his Commander Tivit with Hidden getting 4 treasures and 1 clue off the ETB, with Fernando at his end step flashing in an Archivist of Ogma. Fernando heads to his turn and plays a Glacial Fortress's Land. An Arcane Signet then comes out, with him following it up with the Phantasmal Image. The Fimage resolves and enters as a copy of Tivit, with Fernando getting 2 treasures and 3 clues. Rob on his turn casts a Wishclaw Talisman, Jordan plays an island and casts a merchant scroll. He finds an intuition and gives a card to Fernando off the archivist. With Hidden at his end step, taking two to crack his clue token. Hidden takes another two on his turn to cast a Rhystic Study. The enchantment resolves and Hidden heads the combat. He sends Tivit at Rob, with the table giving another two treasures and three clues when the commander connects. Hidden then on his second main casts a Ranger Captain of Eos who on ETB finds him an Esper Sentinel. Fernando draws again off the search and Hidden ends his turn casting the Sentinel. Although this does prompt a response from Rob as he swords as the Ranger Captain. Rob can't pay for the Rhystic and Hidden draws. Hidden doesn't have a counterspell but doesn't want the Captain exiled and pops it to fizzle the sword. Fernando plays an Urza Saga and heads to combat. The clone Tivit heads at Hidden with the Archivist heading at Rob. There are no blocks and the table gives Fernando 5 treasures. Then on his second main, Fernando casts Aluren of the Third Path. He pays for the Rhystic and then proceeds to blow up the enchantment. Fernando then follows it up with a Prophetic Prism, paying for the Esper and drawing a card off the Artifact ETB. Rob plays an Ancient Tomb and cracks his Wishclaw to go searching. He totally doesn't find a Fimage and Fernando draws off the search. The Phantasmal Image then comes out and enters as a copy of Tibbet. The table give him 3 clues and 2 treasures, with him handing the turn over after that. Jordan pays 2 life to get pro Fernando. He gives a card to Hidden off the Esper and draws after looking at the hand. An Island then comes out as land for turn and Jordan then activates the Wishclaw. Fernando promises he won't use the Wishclaw and gets the artifact in return. Fernando gets a draw off the Archivist, with Jordan passing after that, and Hidden cracking another clue at his end step. Hidden shocks in a Hollowed Fountain and heads to combat. He hits Jordan and gets 3 treasures and 2 clues. Then on his second main, Hidden casts a Time Seed. Although unfortunately for him, Jordan does have a Mana Drain. He doesn't pay for the Esper, with Hidden firing back with the delay. Jordan still has answers though, as he casts a Muddle the Mixture on the delay. The Time Sieve is countered, with Hidden then ending his turn with a Blind Obedience, with Fernando cracking two clues at his end step. 
Fernando upticks his saga and plays a snow covered island. Next up is an Aether Channeler, which on ETB bounces the Blind Obedience. He then heads the combat and sends Tivit at Hidden for another 6, gaining him 2 treasures and 3 clues. Then on his second main, Fernando casts a Talisman of Progress, giving a card to Hidden off the Esper Sentinel and following that up with his commander Brago. With Robert his end step cracking 2 clues to draw and Fernando discarding an island due to hand size. Rob starts off with combat, sending Tivit at Hidden. He gets 2 treasures and 3 clues and follows it up with a dock side. Hidden in response starts cracking treasures and clues to lower his artifact count. Ultimately Rob gets 16 treasures though and follows it up with a silence. He gives a card to Hidden off the Esper Sentinel to which Hidden fires off a mental misstep on it. Rob continues to go for it though as he casts an Ad Nauseam to which Hidden fires off an offer you can't refuse. The stack clears and Rob then neoforms his dockside for a 3 drop. Rob puts a ranger captain onto the battlefield which searches out a spore frog. Fernando gets to draw 2 cards from the searches and Rob then pops a clue for a card, cracking the remaining ones in hope of finding something more to do. Following all of this up with a culling ritual to gain him 15 mana, 7 green and 8 black. Then when I said I was feeling kind of naked, he just blew off my fucking socks. <laughs> Next up is his commander Kenrith, followed by the Spore Frog. He then plays a Misty Reinforces land for turn, cracking it to grab a tropical island. He then activates Kenrith to draw and follows all of that up with a Brain Freeze, deciding to mill Jordan for 33 and ending his turn by putting a plus one plus one counter on Kenrith. Jordan untaps and gains 2 colorless from his mana drain. He uses his floating colorless and an island to cast his tutored intuition. He grabs out a gilded drake, stasis and a mana vault, with Fernando giving him the gilded drake. Jordan did want to take Tivit originally, but didn't have the mana for the ward and instead steals Kenrith, as he's worried with Dockside and Fimage in the bin that Kenrith might just be able to steal a game if left unattended. Hidden untaps and before his draw, Mystical Tutors. Hidden originally thought he had a Savine's Reclamation in the list, but after not seeing it, settles on a Mononic Betrayal. Hidden has a Swamp as land for turn, with him then heading to combat. Hidden sends Tivit at Jordan for 6. The commander connects, but in response to the voting, Rob cracks his Ranger Captain to silence him for the turn. Hidden gains 1 treasure and 4 clues. With Fernando at his end step, pitch casting a solitude. He exiles an ephemerate and with the ETB targets the spore frog, to which Rob sacks the frog. Fernando untaps, draws, and responding to the Urza Saga trigger, floats a mana. He then grabs out a soul ring and plays another snow covered island as land for turn. He uses the colors to help pay for a basalt monolith. A Tezzeret then comes out and Dantix her too to grab out a Strionic Resonator. Fernando then heads to combat and sends Brago at Jordan, with Tivit and Lauren heading at Hidden. But before damage happens, Hidden casts a Cyclonic Rift to bounce the Brago and not lose the game. And while he didn't lose the game, Hidden still does have to take the damage heading his way. And with Tivit connecting, Fernando taps his Resonator to copy Tivit's trigger gaining him a total of 4 treasures and 6 clues. Fernando then on his second main recasts Brago with his treasures. Rob heads straight to combat. He decides Fernando is the threat and despite Fernando saying otherwise, sends Tivit his way. Fernando takes the hit and the table give Rob 2 treasures and 3 clues, with him cracking 2 clues on his second main. He then casts a soul ring and a diabolic intent. Sacking the Drake to grab a card to hand, finally ending his turn with a Mystic Remora. Jordan untaps and hands the turn over, with Hidden cracking a clue at his end step. Hidden is honestly surprised he survived the turn cycle, but knows he's not long for the world, as he casts a Bononic Betrayal. He gives a card to Rob and the spell resolves. He still has a floating mana left over and starts casting rocks out of Jordan's pile. Casting a soul ring into a grim monolith into a mana vault. Although Rob does have a mental misstep on the mana vault. 
Hayden then follows that up with Rob's dock side. Rob responds by cracking his last clue to drop, and the goblin gives Hidden 12 treasures. Next up is a silence. Hidden gives another card to Rob, and the silence actually resolves. Three mana then gets him a spell seeker, which grabs out a tainted pact. Hidden then sacks the spell seeker to a diabolic intent, which gets him a Stasis Oracle. He casts the Oracle and then the tainted pact making sure he leaves at least one card left as to not die to the Lauren sitting on Fernando's side of the field. And with that, Hidden wins the game. Game Review Well, apparently the secret to winning is to not until you do. By all means, Hidden should have died that last turn cycle. Granted, Fernando couldn't have killed him straight up, but he could have attacked with the Aether Channeler to at least drop him to two, and either Rob or Jordan could have finished him off. But with Fernando attempting to win on his turn, the focus shifted enough to let the table forget about the tutored Mononic Betrayal sitting in Hidden's hand. But I also think the table got lucky that Rob wasn't able to win on his big turn. It was fortunate that Jordan's random Graft Digger's Cage was holding Rob back. And while the Culling Ritual did wipe it away, it also prevented him from winning with Dockside Flickers as well. And before everyone leaves, I want to thank a special patron member Josh Schutt for his support of the channel, along with all of our other Patreon supporters as well. And as always, I want to thank all the players who joined for the games, and remember, never give up, even if you're dead on board. I'll see you guys later.